Oh boy, guys, this is a big one. L'Oreal to buy Amouage. Did you hear of the news? Let me know, put a comment down below. Not right out by Amouage. Apparently it's a minority stake in the brand. But according to the article, they're in talks. And also it says it might not go with Amouage, I mean with L'Oreal, they might go with another firm or a company. But I guess they are having these talks and they are interested in selling the brand. I guess I was actually thinking it might happen and this is probably not the only brand. Amouage is not the only brand. There's probably a few other brands that are planning on doing this in the future. But today I'm gonna to talk to you about this potential L'Oreal and Amouage deal and also touch on the Secret Garden collection from Amouage, uh, which has the latest in the collection called Love Delight and also my favorite, a Lilac Love, which is no longer in a colored bottle like this. I'll tell you all about it coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in at Sebastian. We're talking about Amouage today. Yeah, I was a bit caught off guard and shocked when I woke up to the news that L'Oreal is in talks uh, to, uh, you know, have a minority stake in the brand. But what does that mean? L'Oreal is definitely one of the companies that kind of destroys a lot of brands. So Amouage has been kept pretty good with uh, the quality of their fragrances, although prices have been creeping up. And I think a lot of people were not really happy with the creative director changeover from Christopher Chong to Ren um, Renault Salmon. I think that's how you say his name. Uh, and uh, I don't really have an opinion. I felt like the fragrances under Christopher Chong were a bit more Middle Eastern and the fragrances under Renault Sa Salmon are a bit more mass appealing. Those are the differences I'm seeing with the two different creative directors. So what do you guys think? But according to this article, they are in talks and L'Oreal is not the only company they might be considering. There might be a few other uh, companies out there. So the French beauty group has been holding talks on the possible purchase of a minority stake in Amouage. People said asking not to be identified because the information is private. Amouage's owner, the Sabco Group conglomerate, has discussed a valuation of more than 3 billion euros, 3.2 billion dollars for the business in any deal according to the people. Amouage was founded in 1983, they've been around for a long time, with a pitch drawing on the Sultanat of Oman's heritage as a cultural crossroads at the center of ancient trading routes for incense and myrrh. Some of its perfumes fetch $365, although the, the, the Secret Garden collection, the fragrances are $380 for a 100 milliliter bottle. According to Amouage's website, the company sells its products marketed as the Gift of Kings in about a dozen standalone boutiques and a thousand other locations, including department stores, perfume shops, and airports. And recently, Amouage opened up a store, I believe, in a mall in New Jersey. Is this true? Retail sales at Amouage increased to more than $210 million in 2023, more than doubling over a three-year period, three year period. The company is controlled by Sabco, a local business group led by chairman Saeed Khalid bin Hamad al-Busaidi that also has interest in real estate, media, automotive distribution, and electrical equipment. L'Oreal has pursued a string of acquisitions and licensing deals that have helped it build a stable of cosmetics and perfume brands. The company last year bought Australian cosmetics brand Aesop, or Aesop, for an enterprise value of $2.5 billion. For some strange reason, I'm a big fan of Aesop or Aesop, but I missed that news. I don't know how I missed it, but I missed it, which was quite strange until much later on in the year, I, I found out that L'Oreal purchased Aesop. So there's no certainty the deliberations will lead to a transaction and details of the potential deal could change. The people said Amouage could also int attract interest from other investors. A representative for L'Oreal declined to comment. A spokesperson for Sabco couldn't immediately comment while calls to Amouage weren't answered. L'Oreal shares touched fresh record highs in February with investors betting that the company's diverse product range and geographic reach would help it weather a slowing economy. The stock has since slumped, though after L'Oreal reported disappointing fourth quarter sales because of a slowdown in sales to Chinese uh, travelers. So what do you guys think about this? Uh, again, L'Oreal does some really crazy things with brands. For example, the acquisition of Atelier Cologne. What the hell did they do to this brand? They've completely destroyed the brand. It's no longer anywhere to be found, except, except for Europe. Now, recently I was in Europe, in France, I discovered and learned 
that L'Oreal is relaunching Atelier Cologne. If you haven't visited their Instagram account, you can see the new bottles. There's new bottles, which I don't see the change in the bottles all that great because they're redoing the brand. They pulled from the USA because I don't think they knew how to manage this brand. Do they know niche? I mean, like, they know a lot of designers, but I don't know. I mean, do they know how to handle niche? Because like I said, they pulled Atelier Cologne from the States and then they started redoing the brand. Now they're relaunching Atelier Cologne in the Asian market, apparently. This is what I heard when I was in France uh, last month. But this could be uh, pretty devastating for a brand like Amouage, which we come to enjoy for, you know, having really powerful and very intense fragrances. And so going under L'Oreal could mean uh, major reformulations. In fact, Amouage has gone through reformulations. Uh, a lot of people complain about Jubilation 25. So it's kind of gotten watered down. So what would all the fragrances become under L'Oreal? I mean, only thing is that they get watered down because that's what we know of uh, L'Oreal doing. And another example is Mugler. What has uh, L'Oreal done with Mugler? It's a designer after all. Uh, they haven't really done much with men's fragrances from the house, not one. I mean, even the original Amen is a, an online ex exclusive in the States. And Mugler Cologne, I do see it in Europe. It's not available here. So I don't know what they're doing with a lot of brands. And I don't know what the outcome of Aesop or Aesop is. So we'll see what they do with that brand. I I'm a big fan of Aesop and Aesop's fragrances and also products so we only time will tell what will happen with uh, Aesop but um, this uh, news of you know L'Oreal acquiring it's a minority stake in the end but I personally think this might be an all-out purchase I don't know if it's going to be a minority stake if they're talking uh, I think this could be more than a minority stake and the fact that there's other firms that could be involved not necessarily L'Oreal um, uh, I think, uh, yeah, I think they're ready to sell. But what do you guys think? Because recently, Amouage entered at the Neiman Marcus here locally in San Francisco, uh, two years ago, actually, in 2022. That's when I first uh, discovered the, that brand there, just after the, you know, uh, some of the crazy times of the pandemic. And uh, at that time, I felt like, well, since they're coming here, there must be something going on with the brand that might be interested in you know either selling or there might be like a conglomerates uh, wanting to buy the brand but let me know your thoughts on this whole news do you think uh, it's a minority stake do you think uh, the l'oreal might buy the whole thing out uh, do let me know put a comment down below so we can find out and only time will tell we'll see if it's reality i mean if it's reported most likely it is reality the only thing we don't know for sure is if it's the the whole brand or if it's you know truly a minority stake in the brand but do let me know your thoughts on this happening to Amouage and also let me know what are your favorite fragrances from Amouage uh, do, do put a comment down below but let's move on to the Secret Garden collection the Secret Garden collection was started by Christopher Chong in fact my favorite in the collection Lilac Love was under Christopher Chong now Lilac Love is changed I actually sampled it at Neiman Marcus recently they hadn't carried it there for the longest time. Well, for two years, Amouage was there. They kept saying it was an exclusive to Bloomingdale's. They finally have the new version. I smelled it and I felt as if there was a really big difference in the way it wears, not necessarily too much in the way it smells. So we've got it in here along with Love Delight, the latest release from the brand. But we're gonna go through this kit real quickly. I'm gonna give you my opinions. The only one I know, as I said, is uh, Lilac Love, which is an absolute favorite of mine from Amouage. In fact, it might be my favorite fragrance from Amouage. Definitely a top five because I absolutely love it and I love lilac flowers. Let's go ahead and see what this one's all about. It does say a press set like that on the back. This was sent to me, by the way. The Gift of Kings. We read about that recently, just a little while ago. So basically, this is a 100 ml bottle of Love Delight, the latest, and small mini 10 ml atomizers of 
the other three fragrances. I think their presentation is quite amazing, don't you guys think? It even comes with strips. Moyet, is that what you call it uh, in Europe? Or is that not proper to use anymore? I'll go with strips. So we're going to go in order of um, the way the, 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 the fragrances are in the kit. This is Lilac Love first. And the bottle is different for sure. It's a more maroon colored bottle, not necessarily the color of lilac. I just wonder why they changed the color of the bottle. Was it just a cheap looking color? Is that what it is? I don't know. And the smell to me is different. To me, the original is a lot powderier, not as smooth and creamy, more like a woody creaminess, like a polished effect to the fragrance in comparison to the original. But let's smell this again on the strip. Smell-wise, I feel like it's very, very sim similar. Let's also try the uh, original. Yeah, the, the effect is powderier with the original and a bit more smoother with the, the new version. But I feel like there's something, you know, there's a reformulation that happened to create this difference. You can totally notice it because I've gone through two bottles of Lilac Love. It's an absolute favorite of mine. And um, when you learn a fragrance that much and you try, you, you think you're trying the same fragrance and it comes off different, you really are, you know, able to notice it totally. Yeah, this, this one right here is the new version. This one right here is the powderier version, but mostly they're very, very similar. In fact, um, when I wore the the new version that I tested out at Neiman Marcus, I thought, wow, this fragrance is kicking after many, many hours. So the potency is still there. The smell is still there, very close to the original. It's just, it wears different. There's a noticeable difference with the way it wears. Something about it is like polished woods with all the lilac and everything else. It features lilac, heliotrope, peony, gardenia, orris, cocoa, tonka, sandalwood, patchouli, and vanilla. So in the end, it's a kind of a amber floral, kind of a floral gourmand experience, but a really delicious one. So do I recommend the new version? I do. If you want, like it a little more powdery, try and find the original. If you are fine with, because uh, the smell wise, I think they're very, very close. But if you like it smoother, go with the new one. I just don't care for the new bottle color. What do you guys think? The difference between the old bottle and the new bottle? Uh, do let me know. Put a comment down so I can find out. And again, I read the article and the article mentioned 100 ml for 365. That article must have written, been written a while ago because it does say $380. Although that could have been in euros. I think that was in euros come to think of it. So yeah, $380 for 100 ml, which is what they are sold for here at... Uh, Neiman Marcus. So the next three fragrances in the Secret Garden collection I'm not too familiar with. In fact, there were more fragrances in the collection. There was even a mimosa. I think it was called Love Mimosa, which I believe is discontinued. And I think there was maybe one or two more in addition to that. But Blossom Love is the next one. The first fragrance, Lilac Love, was created by Nathalie Lorson. The second fragrance is also created by Nathalie Lorson along with Elise Bonnet. That's Blossom Love. And this one features notes of cherry blossom nectar, rose liqueur, Ylang Ylang Long, Amaretto Accord, Vanilla, Tonka Beans, Sandalwood, and Cashmere Ann. This one's actually quite yummy. I had not sampled this before. What is that smokiness in there? Wow. There's a, there's a very strange, kind of like, just sparked match smell. The smoke that comes off. But fruity, boozy, and very floral. This is super delicious. Wow. I don't know where I've been with this particular fragrance, but Blossom Love. It's an, it's Natalie Lorson. I mean, she's a great perfumer. She does some great, great work. I think um, it's a given that I, I'm a big fan of Lilac Love, but Blossom Love is also really delicious. This one I want to wear, actually. Hmm. That's super delicious, actually. That's quite nice. Let me know if you're a fan of Blossom Love. It's been around for some time. 
That wears really great on me. Really, really great. I'm, I'm surprised I haven't tried this one. It's a interestingly smoky, but also kind of boozy and fruity at the same time. It's a gourmand, but it's a, kind of a strange gourmand. But in a good way, not in a bad way. It wears super sexy on me. Really wonderful. Blossom Love. Let me know if you're a fan of Blossom Love. Put a comment down below. So I have a correction. I believe Lilac Love was also a joint collaboration with uh, Natalie Lorson and Elise Bonat. I completely got that wrong. I think the databases at one time only featured Natalie Lorson's name. Then they later added Elise Bonat's name. But the next fragrance, Love Tuberose, is a Natalie Lorson creation. So this is also an older fragrance and part of the Secret Garden collection, which is now down to four fragrances, with the latest being Love Delight, which is uh, this one here. So Love Tuberose is Tuberose Gardenia Jasmine Chantilly Cream Vanilla Cedarwood Sandalwood. And it's 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 given here. We've got this four Secret Garden collection fragrances. There's nothing edgy about them, although maybe the previous one a little bit. Uh, but uh, as I was saying, under Christopher Chong, the fragrances were definitely a bit more edgier, a bit more Middle Eastern. Here now they are a bit more mass appealing. And this totally is very, very mass appealing kind of a gourmand floral fragrance once again. It's a nice one, but I prefer the other ones more. But definitely a very floral gourmand fragrance. It's milky, it's creamy because it's got that Chantilly cream, but it's got lots of vanilla and uh, also the tuberose, gardenia and jasmine. It's basically this beautiful bouquet of white flowers with their kind of creamy undertones. And you've got the vanilla, the Chantilly cream, and then sandalwood in addition to that to, you know, give you the very creamy effect. Definitely nice. I would rank this number three in the collection so far. Um, Lilac Love is still my favorite, but Love Blossom is uh, quite nice. I, I can't believe how good that one is. So the first three fragrances were by Fermaniche Perfumers, and now we've got Pascal Goran with Love Delight, who is a IFF perfumer. And this is the latest Love Delight, as you can see right here. The thing they've done with the bottles is they've made them matte, their frosty kind of matte finish, and they're shiny here. So... They photograph better when they're matte uh, I need for Instagram kind of a thing. So Pascal Goran, this is ginger, mandarin, rose water, cinnamon, heliotrope, jasmine, rose, vanilla, cocoa, rum. Sounds like another floral gourmand once again. Anybody a fan of this one? This one's brand new. The latest in this collection. I think there was like six or seven in the collection. Now it's kind of like edited down to four. And this was a kit that was um, put together for press. So let's see. So this one is tart and spicy and very unique kind of a smell. Reminds me of... That is very interesting. It's not a love it or hate it, but it's giving me a scent memory of something and I can't remember what it is. Like a space, uh, like a, some kind of a space, like a hotel, like a hotel lobby that has... Uh, you know, like uh, candles burning with the kind of uh, either candles burning or like they've uh, put ambiance smell in there. So it's, it's, a, it's, not, it's not a negative thing to say about this one, but it's not like a wow, but I'm liking it. I'd have to wear it. Something in here just gives me some kind of a strange scent memory and I don't know what it is. Might be the ginger, but it doesn't come off like a zingy spicy ginger. It's more just like ginger without the spice because there's this dis distinct smell of ginger but it comes along with a lot of zing and spice you know it's a bit peppery in that ginger way but it doesn't have that here just the ginger without its spice kind of mixed in with all the other notes it's pleasant for sure very interesting fragrance so that's love delight the latest in the secret garden collection again my favorite is Lilac Love, I absolutely love it. And I think the new version's okay. Followed by Blossom Love. Blossom Love, wow, I can't believe how good that is. It's different, but good in a different way, which is quite nice, because there's something a little weirdly off-putting, but in a positive way. It's kind of rubbing me the wrong way, like a smokiness, like that match burning, as I said, against the fruitiness and the booziness. So that's very, very unique for me uh, in that fragrance. So I would choose that as my number two. 
And I think the next two would be tied, which would be Love Tuberose and Love Delight. So uh, what are your thoughts on these fragrances from Amouage's Secret Garden Collection? Do let me know. Put a comment down below. And don't forget to let me know about what you think about L'Oreal potentially buying or, you know, like a minority stake in the brand of Amouage. Do we love L'Oreal? Do we hate L'Oreal? What are your thoughts? I know a lot of people hate L'Oreal because they butcher the fragrances. That's our fear, and that's what they'll do because they've done it with Armani, YSL, Ralph Lauren, and they'll do it with other brands. I mean, they've done it with all the brands that they've acquired. But And then also they'll kill a brand like Atelier Cologne. I mean, I don't know what they've, they're doing with Atelier Cologne. I mean, it's weird. Uh, it's only launching in uh, Asian countries now, which is kind of weird because I, I really, really appreciated that brand. I really, really did. There was a lot of great fragrances, but they just completely pulled the brand, took it to France. Out of all of the North America, I don't even know if it was in South America, but they said North America, it's being pulled. Now they're being relaunched and uh you know set to the asian countries and new bottles too and i don't think the new bottles are that great I, I think they're a bit very similar but a bit of minor changes but we'll see what happens with the amouage and l'oreal but uh only time will tell if it's uh, the the entire brand purchase or if it definitely is a minority stake and of course if it's l'oreal or another firm but either way guys thanks so much for watching today's video if you have any questions or comments please do list below please like this video please share it follow me on instagram and facebook and i'll be back with more videos very soon have a good one goodbye